multi-lines. What shall I say? Um, if you would like to set up a multi-line style and see how to draw multi-lines, you need look no further. I'll explain all you need to know in just a moment. To make a confession, however, I can't say I've used multi-lines very much at all in 27 years of working with AutoCAD. So I would actually be very glad to hear from anybody who has used them. Drop me a line or write your comments under the video. But in the meantime, let's get on with multi-lines. In order to draw multi-lines, we need to define multi-line styles. There is, of course, one already existing, a sort of standard, but let's have a look and see how we can define different types of multi-line and then see what we can actually do with them. The multi-line commands can be called out over the command line. If you just type ML, you should see all three possible commands. Multi-line itself, which draws the lines, style definition and editing. If you don't like typing, we can actually open up our menu bar and under format, we can find multi-line style and define them or if you don't like using the menu bar which in fact I don't because it takes up much too much space we can actually put the relevant commands up here how do we do this let's just go to our workspace change customize I'll just check out here under multi and there we have them already and we can pop these in our quick access toolbar multi-line multi-line edit and multi-line style just drag and drop those up here say OK and there we have them multi-line style multi-line edit and multi-line itself Let's then start with multi-line style. OK, standard is a two parallel lines. Very exciting. If we say modify, we can define the width of our multi-line here. So it's basically, I'm using a millimeter drawing, half a millimeter above our middle line and half a millimeter below. You may ask, well, why half a millimeter? That's a very good question. It's one I cannot answer. And it's related to a variable which is preset in AutoCAD and the variable is called CML scale. CML scale and when I activate that we see that it has a value of 20 which basically means all of these distances which we are now going to put into our multi-line definition are multiplied by 20. I'm going to just change that to 1 and go back to my multi-line style I'm going to modify our standard and say, yeah, this is for a standard wall of, say, 125 millimeters thick, which would mean I would want half of that above and half of it below. That's 62.5 above. And minus 62.5 below. And we can leave the color on by layer. What we can also do, I didn't mention that, we can also give it a filling if we particularly want to. Let's take a nice light grey. Say OK. That doesn't appear in the preview. But if I now draw a multi-line, it has a filling in it, which is, I guess, quite nice if you like that kind of thing. Interestingly, um, although I have these various things, active polar tracking and object snap and so on, I can't actually go to endpoints and make the thing somehow regular in size, but I can do C for close as you would with a polyline. Also interesting is although we define it according to an imaginary middle line, it actually seems to draw things from one of the edges. OK, that's how simple it is. Let's define a new one, though, just for fun. I'm going to call this wall standard 
zero one. Continue. I'm going to imagine it's a standard wall which is used in Europe, a 24 centimeter block with insulation on the outside, let's say 18 centimeters and two centimeters of plaster on the inside. So I'm going to call it exterior wall. And let's say our first one, I'm going to draw this as the 24 centimeter block. So that will be 120 above. I'm going to make that magenta. The other side would be minus 120. Let's do that also magenta. The plaster I'll put at minus 140. So it's 20 more than that one. Let's do that in blue. We can take different line types for these various things. It's not a problem if I wanted to take a hidden, for example. Um, but I don't, in fact. Let's just leave that a continuous. In fact, line type by layer may be more sensible. And I have my insulation on the outside. I'm going to define that with two lines of blue five millimeters apart so let's add one that would be 120 plus 180 is 300 and we'll do that as well in blue and the other one will then be 295 I'll do that one in red see okay let's set, set that to current So I go back here and say, uh, let's let's just, ooh, ooh, I can't change it. It's a bit of a shame, really, because it would be nice to be able to modify them so that you can then, yeah, so that uh, existing ones will then be updated. But it doesn't, in fact. OK, so I want to change this. I have to erase it and then say, here, modify, then we'll change it so there's no fill, filling color draw it again. So and there it is as we can see without any filling. Let's have a look now and see what else we can do with our multi-line styles. But to do that we have to erase this and we go to our style thing here, go to modify we haven't talked much about the endpoints. Let's just pick, for example, start and end as a line. Angle we can leave at 90 degrees. Inner arcs, outer arcs, no, we don't want that. Let's just say OK. OK. Draw a line. Enter. And we have a, a straight line going across here at the ends. It means as well, of course, if I were to trim that and then get rid of this, we have straight lines at the ends here if you want doors or, or windows or whatever in your multi-line. Of interest is also, of course, if we start our line, something I haven't mentioned before is the justification. When I click that, then we can say top, bottom, or zero, meaning of course the top line, the bottom line, or the zero line as per our definition. Let's have a look and see what else we can do. I want to draw another line across here. We have also another command which is our edit command. So for example corner joints, For example, we have other things. For example, here, edit open cross, where it just 
joins up the relevant lines or closed cross. I don't have an example here. Let's have another line going across here. And so on. I'll leave you to experiment with all the various options we have here. So that was it for just now. But if you'd like to make any comments about the video or you have indeed any questions about this or any other videos, feel free to write the, the comments in at the bottom below the video or you can contact me directly over my website. The information for that will appear roughly about now. But also at the end of the video you will find a link where you can just click on it and you come straight to my website. You will also find a link to subscribe to my channel and I can sincerely recommend that because then in this way you can keep in touch with developments in AutoCAD, different subjects which I will deal with as I upload videos from time to time. So thanks very much for watching and see you soon.